In this mini series, we're going to be looking at the similarities and differences between thermoscope and underfloor heating. And in this video, we're going to look at the efficiencies. Both thermoscope and underfloor heating are both very efficient ways to heat your home. Both of the systems use radiation rather than convection. Both of them evenly spread the heat around the room to increase overall thermal comfort. And both of them, something, something. <laughs> and both systems work very effectively on low flow temperature systems like air source heat pumps. Ultimately, the performance of any heating system should be measured via the thermal comfort that it creates. And by eliminating cold spots and combating heat losses where they're most present, thermoscope and underfloor heating create a very even and thermally comfortable environment right the way throughout the room. This is demonstrated in the Bizria test documentation, which shows the difference in heat distribution of a one kilowatt radiator and one kilowatts of thermoscope. The primary differentiator between thermoscope and underfloor heating is the response time. Now, because thermoscope is made of aluminium and it's above ground, it starts to do the work as soon as your heating system turns on. Much like a radiator, the response times are noticeably quicker than underfloor heating, often having an impact on the room's overall temperature within minutes rather than hours. In addition, the response times of underfloor heating can often be affected not just by the construction methodology of the floor, but also the floor coverings and even the placement of carpets and rugs. So whilst underfloor heating can take a long time to bring rooms up to temperature, those rooms tend to hold that heat once they're there. However, this can have a very negative impact when it comes to overheating. Bringing the room up to temperature, but then often failing to turn off in time to control that maximum room temperature. Every hour that's spent over the target room temperature is classed as overheating and high thermal mass systems can often fall foul of these overheating issues. Low thermal mass systems like thermoscope turn on quickly and turn off quickly, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the room will cool quickly as well. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Radiators heat up a room through convection currents, meaning that they heat up the air to then transfer that heat around the room. So when they turn off, the air changes and then the room starts to feel cooler again. With thermoscope, it's the opposite because with skirting heating, that heats the room through infrared radiation. Now, infrared radiation heats up the objects directly. So the walls, the floors, the ceiling, the furniture, everything just feels the same. And that can be seen here in this thermal imaging video. Everything throughout this room is all within one degree C of each other. But so what? Well, if you heat up every object in the room to a similar temperature, it takes a lot longer for the thermal comfort of that room to reduce even when the heat emitters are turned off. You can see from this graph here that in a 1970s refurb, when it's zero degrees outside, the heating is on for a couple of hours in the morning. That brings the room from 17 up to 20 degrees. That's then maintained throughout the day by the thermal fabric of the building. And then from 19 to 21 in the evening, which carries through to the following day. This means that with thermoscope, the heating's on for four hours in a 24 hour period, even on a cold winter's day. No matter what anybody says, you can't be more economical than turned off. So the more time that your heating system spends turned off, the less it's gonna be to run overall. What thermoscope offers you is the thermal comfort and the long, slow, cool down times of underfloor heating, but with the responsive controllability of a radiator.